Welcome back, and an amazing revelation uh, with Dr. H. Ruat, and it's a fantastic, it's very timely, you know, things happen supernaturally. Today we usually have on Wednesdays, uh, as well, Professor James McCanny, and it's great to have you back on regularly, uh, Dr. Truat. You uh, have been following very closely, and we also have the Western Journalism articles up about uh, Obama, and the things with Sheriff Arpaio by no means are over. This latest Supreme Court of California is to rule on Obama eligibility, and the uh, 17th of December is the date when the actual Electoral College actually transfers the Electoral College votes, and there's 55 in California, uh, to the, uh, the Electoral College for the election of Obama. Now, there are a number of states that disputed even his eligibility, including Arizona, and Sheriff Arpaio and his team of uh, posse, the posse if you want to call it, have uh, shown very clearly in a number of points where his social security card, etc., that Obama is an Ill- ineligible uh, candidate for president. And now it appears that this uh, issue of eligibility is going to be brought forward to where the Supreme Court actually will deal with it probably before the 17th of December and the date when the Electoral College votes are transferred. Can you give us more info on this? Because this is very big. Uh, we have other articles we posted up from West Journalism as well. And this is going to uh, really, as I said almost prophetically before, uh, several months ago, that if Obama gets in by a narrow margin, which is the most probable alternative, they'll be disputed legally for months afterwards, and that Obama is going to go through a firestorm. If Obama stays, we literally have, as we said in the first hour with Hardy Schlanger, the American public will have, in a sense, proxy voted for nuclear war, economic devastation, a cut to these entitlements programs and the social safety net, which he'll try to blame on the Republicans, and a raising of taxes, which will destroy industry here, continuing to transfer technology and businesses and factories to the third world. So uh, Obama is a nightmare, and if we don't get him out of power quickly, as LaRouche says, we are doomed. So uh, tell us all about this latest revelation from Orly Tates. The attorney has been pursuing this. Uh, with a very great deal of aggression uh, and methodical uh, t- analysis, and of course the posse under uh, Sheriff Arpaio has done an amazing job. Well, it's, uh, it's all a matter of timing, as I talked to you on the phone, uh, Dr. Bill, and, and by the way, just thanks for uh, having me back on your show. appreciate the opportunity. Really, uh, I don't know about you, but I think I'm pretty much uh, up to speed on... on <laughs> public events, current events. What is this fiscal cliff all of a sudden? How come we never heard a word of a fiscal cliff uh, during all the months of October leading up to the November elections? It's only after the popular elections that suddenly the very the very week of the elections is concluded. You hear a fiscal cliff, being, you know, and then there's a big drop in the stock market. You know, there's all these problems. How come this was never brought to the, to the voters, this, this scenario of a fiscal cliff? I want to ask that question first of all. Well, the reason I think why is that they're planning on a dance there where they're playing a game of chicken, but the public is the chicken. Well, this is uh, this is all part of uh, the play. I, I, I wish I was a bug on the wall during the, the White House meeting where Romney came and had lunch with Obama. Nobody was allowed to uh, listen in. Nobody was allowed to not to even dis- hear the discussion. I, I wonder what the if a fly on the wall could tell us. I wonder what they really discuss. You know, and the fact that uh, I think it's kind of funny. Obama served him up white turkey meat <laughs> for the lunch. You know, has that ever happened? Where you know the an incumbent president was met in a private lunch with a defeated challenger? I mean. Well, it looked to me like the it looked to me like the fight was thrown. I mean, it was it, Romney lost this war fight rather than Obama winning it. And all Romney had to do was ask questions about about the fiscal cliff, ask questions about Benghazi and the cover up, ask who changed the uh, the talking points. There it wasn't Susan Rice was put up as a Punch and Judy doll, while uh, Hillary Clinton is still alive for the 2016 comeback for uh, running for president. So the whole thing stinks. Yeah. Here in Utah, we have you know we have pretty good connections with uh, uh, Jason Chaffetz's office. Uh, he's really been the, the cheerleader, the rah 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 guy of Romney, right? Jason Chaffetz represented Chaffetz. Right. So you know I, I got to tell you, Doctor Bill, 
when when the uh, Obama camp made a big stink about uh, Romney not putting out his taxes or right? having his taxes, and we just uh, bounce off a chap. It's why don't you just uh, respond? Well, uh, candidate Romney, Governor Romney, will show the taxes uh, and do this in complete disclosure when uh, Obama releases his dual transcript. You know, yeah. make this an issue. Well, it was it was just like, oh no, we can't go there. We can't touch that. And I thought, well, why not? I mean, yeah. this, these 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 transcripts, this smoking gun that he spent two million dollars in two thousand eight to cover up. Why is this not discussed? Why is it not part of the debate? You see, uh, it doesn't make know. sense, does it? It, it? it makes it violates all logic that. Uh, that, that we can't pursue this, and if he spends $2 million, what's to be covered up? Well, the real issue, and it was brought out in these two documentaries uh, by Dinesh D'Souza uh, and Joel uh, over before the election, that we not only know that his biological father was, was uh, Frank Marshall Davis, but also his mentor fathers were all social communists and terrorists, and that he had direct links to the Russian Communist Party. Uh, that Obama basically is a globalist stooge for the bankers that are basically trying to run America into the ground. And uh, he's fully happy about the idea that, that the um, withdrawal of $500 billion from the U.S. military budget next year, the sequestrations will destroy our military. He knows that he doesn't want to be blamed for cutting the social programs and the social safety net in the middle of a recession depression. So he's smirking all the way to the bank. His best position is to smirk like the Cheshire cat while the uh, Republicans uh, literally try to stand firm with the idea that you can't raise taxes or you'll kill jobs, but Obama is crazy enough to think he all he has to do is just continue to pretend he's going to negotiate and absolutely not budge on this idea that he uh, wants more revenue, but he absolutely insists on increasing taxes. It's crazy behavior, and Obama and his bankster buddies want to crush the middle class, they want to raise taxes on everyone, and they want the Republicans to take the blame for it. Well, okay, this, so this is the, all the timing. That comes, first of all, that whole thing, the whole debate was so fishy. You know, that, that this issue is, is extremely valid, it's extremely important. This is uh, now being heard by the California Supreme Court. I'm not exactly sure what date, the time given on the docket, if it's even done yet. But it has to happen well before Monday, before the Electoral College uh, actually elects, you know, gives the total win. Yeah, that will be... It's, uh, it's huge. It's absolutely yeah. huge. But nothing yeah, Monday is the 17th. Yeah, yeah, he's acting like he's elected, yeah. but he's not elected because the votes haven't been transferred. Uh, the important thing okay. here is other states retroactively can withdraw his validity for a candidate and can block the transfer of the votes for the Electoral College as well. Well, especially if if and when the California Supreme Court rules, rules him ineligible, that sets a, a precedent in the... The judicial branch, okay, which which basically invalidates on all ballots, uh, legalistically, okay. Yeah. So then the question becomes: since the uh, he's no longer a candidate, does the electoral college uh, law kick in and the election then the next president elected by Congress, specifically the House of Representatives? Yeah. In other words, now, the Congress actually would then determine. Uh, would the next president be uh, Bonner? Skipping over, of course, the because the, the the chain of of transfer of power is president to vice president to the head of the House of Representatives. So, would that mean that uh, if this election literally was declared invalid, that Bonner would become the president until another election? No, no, it just means that the, that the House of Representatives elect the president. They yeah, elect they the president. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, let's open this up a little bit more. Um, 
It says that apparently the two premises in this case with Orly Tate says the plaintiffs provided the court with evidence of nearly one and a half million invalid voter registrations in the state of California. Such a large number invalid, invalid voters uh, votes justifies a stay in certification of the results. And second, plaintiffs provided evidence of candidate Barack Obama committed massive election frauds by forged IDs and a fraudulent obtained Connecticut Social Security number 042-68-4425, which was never assigned to Obama, and using a name which is not legally his, as he is listed under the last name Sobarak, S-O-E-B-A-R, K-A-H in his mother's U.S. passport, and there's no evidence of him either ever legally changing his name from Barack Obama to Barack to Barack Obama. Additionally, in the school records is in Indonesia, his citizenship is listed as Indonesian, not American. There's no record of a record relinquishing his Indonesian citizenship and gaining U.S. citizenship, even if one were to believe he is our arguendo. Uh, changed his citizenship from Indonesian to American later in life, he would be a naturalized citizen and not a natural born. Additionally, plaintiffs provided the courts with the sworn affidavits Maricopa County, Arizona investigator Mike Zulio, who uh, is currently conducting a criminal investigation of forgeries in Obama's IDs, uh, who attested that Obama's birth certificate, selective service certificate, and social security card represent forgeries. Similarly, uh, plaintiffs provided affidavits of Sheriff Joseph Arpaio, Senior Deportation uh, Officer Jan- John Sampson, experts Paul Irie and Douglas Vogt, Felicitio Papa, and Investigator Susan Daniels, all of whom are attesting that Obama's IDs are forgeries. Affidavit of the Assistant Clerk of the City of Honolulu, Timothy Adams, attests to the fact that there is no birth certificate for Barack Obama in any hospital in Hawaii. Statement of the Ministry of Health in Kenya, James Orengo, attested to Obama's birth in Kenya and Obama's own biography submitted by him to his legally agent in 1991, stating that he was born in Kenya and raised in Indonesia. Uh, I guess this is pretty damning, isn't it? Well, it is, and just the fact, again, that... uh you know, this is press release was sent out by Orly Tate's office. Mm-hmm. He's you know, an attorney. Now, this is a press release sent out. Uh, I, I got it personally. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much saying that the, the Supreme Court of California will will finally rule on this, uh, yay or nay. I mean, and, and I and I really, honestly believe that uh, this is this is an agenda that was supposed to happen. Just as it's planned out, nothing. Nothing of this nature happens by accident. Also, yeah, the fact that they, you mentioned they're already preparing for the administration of uh, Romney, I mean, that's pretty uh, strange. And Romney, of course, dropped off the political stage. They don't also have him considered in the list of people to run for 2016, even though he only lost by a tiny margin. And if they simply brought in policies, say, from uh, the parts of the Republican Party that were going to deal humanely with women's rights and the immigration issues, uh, Romney would have won very easily. It's not an issue that he lost by a large margin. It's a very tiny margin, and there was a lot of voter fraud proven in multiple jurisdictions by the uh, voter fraud experts. Well, again, all all it needs is uh, California to basically set the precedent. When it happens, Again, there's a couple of things that are really eye-opening. Here in Utah, Romney's uh, transition team, so-called, is headed by ex-Utah Governor Michael Levitt. Now, he's been busy setting up uh, the, the administration, contacting cabinet members, setting up offices and everything else for the new administration. There was a little blip in the Salt Lake Tribune newspaper that... Uh, the transition team has not folded up shop yet. They've, they're continuing as if there's going to be an uh, inauguration with Romney. Like, what do they know that we don't know? Well, they're probably uh, keeping their lips uh, zipped very tight if this is going to happen. Of course, what I see happening, if, if Obama, if the courts in California do certify that Obama is, is a valid candidate, the first thing that's going to happen is next year, we probably will go over the fiscal cliff because it's obvious that Obama is not going to budge an iota, which is why everybody is going home today from the from the from the Congress, and uh, and uh, Bonner is saying, "Well, I'm available." He said that on news this morning. I, I watched, which means that Obama has no intentions of negotiating. 
he wants the Republicans to take the full brunt of the cuts and the benefits and the entitlements, and he wants to raise taxes on everybody, including Obamacare, which is going to destroy business by itself, even aside from the fiscal cliff. So it's Obama's job to wreck America, and he's doing a very fine job. Well, here's what else the press release says. Let me quote this. While citizens cannot contact the court, of course, and influence the decision of the court one way or another, they can write to the court and ask to expedite this case. As this is the most important matter of national security and client is indeed of the essence. No, you can, you can, it would be cool if you had a, you know, thousands of people saying expedite this before the 17th. The 17th is when the fat lady sings, so this uh, ball game is all over until the fat lady sings. Yeah. Yeah, we have also the, the contact info there for, for uh, law officer Orly Tates in Rancho San Margarita in California. Her numbers and email are right there, and I'm certain that if you contact her office, they'll refer you on so you can contact the California Superior Court, and they can actually expedite this decision so that they can block the transfer of the Electoral College votes. Obama basically, with the voter fraud, and the voter fraud experts have shown that there's a lot of, so many areas where this anomalies occurred where there wasn't literally one vote in some districts in, say, uh, Pennsylvania, it's just mind-boggling. I mean, even if accidentally somebody would vote for uh, for Romney. But in these districts, there were also some places where 140% of the population voted because people were literally voting from the grave. Ohio. I mean, you take yeah. Ohio's 20, 29 votes. Ohio is uh, huge, huge, huge water fraud being uh, surfaced in there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah these, uh, this is going to, uh, to come to a head probably next week. And I think it's, it's also significant. Here you have the 17th of December, uh, Monday being that uh, the date where this could really make a worldwide news. Then you have the 21st of December, the same week, Friday. There could be mass mass uh, civil rioting going on in the inner cities, and you know if this is uh, allowed to continue this way. Well, you know that uh, that they've already warned that they're going to. Remember the commercials put out by uh, there were I call attack ads that basically threatened to burn the uh, M effer down. Uh, literally, you know, ninety plus year old females. I mean, this and you know showing. Uh, Eyes ablaze on commercials by, uh, you know, across television. It's unbelievable that this kind of thing is going on. And, and of course, Obama he believes in class warfare and in race warfare, and he's he's energizing it. He's trying to split the nation and balkanize it, so it's easier to eventually break up America once you collapse the economy. The, the globalists want to deal with not one state. They want to deal with anywhere from three to six states. In fact, a Russian geopolitical analyst says that continuing the policies of Obama after the next four years, if he still exists, will be well on the way to the uh, breakup of America in the next decade or so to four to six districts. Easy to digest for the globalists. Back in a moment. Welcome back. Uh, literally, as we mentioned in the first hour, if we don't remove Obama, we're, we're on the edge of World War III. And I mentioned on the break, it says in Revelation, I saw an angel standing with one foot on the land and one on the sea. Uh, and, of course, he held forth a scroll in his hand, the, the small scroll of Revelation 10. That angel, believe it or not, is standing with its foot on the land at Tarsus, the Russian base in Syria. Now, people need to understand this, what this means. It means with NATO and U.S. ships there and Russia basically saying yet to the Russians and the Chinese are saying no way, we're asking for it. We're asking for the release of bioweapons on American soil. We're asking for a level of response and to warn the Syrians about to be executed, including Bashar Assad, who knows he's dead already. He's dead whether he surrenders or not. That if he doesn't stand up to the West and NATO... And by the way, the Syrians have a long history of standing up. 
that his, uh, his whole country is going to be raped and pillaged. And any Christians, any Jews, anybody of any secular uh, orientation that's not a full-born uh, Islamic uh, fundamentalist, they're finished. So I know that they're going to use everything in their arsenal against enemies. He's already stated he won't use it against his own population, but he will use it against Turks and NATO and U.S. forces coming in. And that includes your constant persona cruise missiles, sunburn missiles, and the, uh, the, uh, the Hoot um, high-speed cavitation super torpedo that can travel 284 knots, which is over 350 miles per hour, under the water that the U.S. Navy does not have anything to stop it. So we're going to see a carrier group go to the bottom of the, of the Mediterranean Ocean. We're going to see American uh, and NATO forces die. And we're going to see America try to use neutron and other weapons against the Syrians. And the Russians are going to do something to us for it. We're just asking to start World War III right at the time when Obama is about to be extricated from his office as the commander-in-chief, the destroyer-in-chief, we should call him, because that's what he is, the destroyer-in-chief. Well, you know, what's uh, interesting, Dr. Bill, is I, I had on my show a while back a gentleman who had a recurring set of dreams uh, that he, he I, I, I've met him personally, he's here in Utah, he's, uh, he's actually American Samoan, but uh, that uh, went to Hawaii and lived there. He left Hawaii uh, two years ago because, you know, I, I knew the guy has, has prophetic dreams all the time. He laid this out for me. So it actually was in the manuscript he shared with me. And he, what he, what he laid out is exactly what you just barely said. That there would be a, a, a conflagration in Syria in the Middle East. He laid it all out five years ago. He saw this, uh, and it, what he said what happens is America is, is 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 beaten down powerfully by Russia in the Persian Gulf, and China attacks. Simultaneously, it occupies and controls the Hawaiian Island chain. He saw him, his family, everybody lined up on the beach, massive amounts of American citizens, and mass executed. It was so real, he had to leave Hawaii. He left How long do you think it would take for, for the Chinese to take Hawaii? Uh, they're already ticked off with our approach and, and uh, support of, of our so called allies to prevent the Chinese oil explorations in the South China Sea. The fact is that we're even licensing the Chinese 60 miles off the Florida coast, but we're trying to block them in the South China Sea in the area of their own territory. So the Chinese aren't taking them kindly to this, and we're trying to force them also to accept the rules of the New World Order and the new global currency that's controlled by the globalist bankers in the city of London. Uh, the Russians and the Chinese and their allies aren't going to take it anymore. You know, I I just uh, you know, it gives me cold chills to to see the thing set up just as this guy, this gentleman, had seen in multiple right. well, uh, well, new visions. He said it, well, it happened uh, over a thousand times. So well, well, here's it. Here's what I suspect will happen, because we have to come to the brink literally of pushing the button to end the world. And out of this is going to come a peace treaty ratified by whoever is the next president, and that ratification will outgrow the rebuilding of the Herodian Temple. It's right in the Bible in Daniel 20, 927, and I believe we are very close. I think that in 2013, it's very probable that we will have the peace treaty after we come to the brink of thermonuclear annihilation of man on Earth. And then we'll come so close that we will be willing to accept, even as it says in the Bible, a covenant with death that will partition the state of Israel, which has already partly happened because Palestine is now, and Hamas has now gotten an assurance that they're an observer status nation in the United Nations, which means they can join the Court of Justice out of The Hague. They can actually have observer status and actually have all kinds of ways of getting trade to build up their own military support in Gaza, uh, and alliances with Egypt and Jordan. So I think that uh, 2013 is going to bring us to the brink of destruction. Uh, and Obama, in his policies, he wants to bring us over the fiscal cliff. He wants to crush the middle class. He wants to have America a vassal for globalist bankers. And he wants to spend like a drunken sailor while degrading our military because the $500 billion sequestrations will paralyze our Navy in the midst of a building war, paralyze our Air Force, 
and not even be able to cut checks to actually make the contractors that supply the military even with their meals. This is really stupid, and it's incredibly dangerous on the part of Obama to deploy, not at the behest of Congress, because he's declaring another war, but at the United Nations and NATO to declare another war against Syria. And Obama has not been impeached already because he did this before in Libya and Tunisia. And he's doing it again, and this is why the so-called ambassador was killed, because he's a brown shirt that was involved with the transshipment of armaments to kill Syrian citizens, military and police, and to do regime change. And they've now voted 92 senators, Republican and Democrat, to support arming our potential enemies, Al-Qaeda, to do it, these mercenary murderers. All CIA, though. All, all CIA. Officers. It's unbelievable. It's like a, it's like you got a guy with a with a rabid dog that's trained, and this 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 killer dog, you know, is is, is you know a, a hybrid cyber you know, like the Cujo, and the Cujo just happens to have a blazon across his chest, Al Qaeda, and he's our bad dog, and we're now going to arm this bad dog and have him kill the Syrians and crush him because we want to take control of the Middle East. And of course, once we get rid of Syria, the next step is we want to take out Iran. Yeah. Which is absolutely going to get us into really, really big trouble, but we know that the Iranians and the Pakistanis will respond in kind. It's not just taking out Syria. Iran has to respond because they have a mutual defense treaty, and Pakistan's already said if you attack Iran, we're in it, and they have a giant stockpile of at least 300 nuclear weapons. Right. Well, it goes back again to um, you know, the, the whole Zionist agenda, really. Well, I see no difference, ultimately, in the Zionists and the communists. They're just the same to other people. Uh, Dr. Bill, you know, Mormonism is extreme Zionism. You know that as an ex-Mormon. I am yeah. uh, something called a snake. The white horse prophecy of Joseph Smith is the Constitution, and, and it even goes further than that. If you look at the concept, America as a free nation would literally, in the words of Joseph Smith, hang by a thread. And then right. Mel Kennedy, that priesthood holder, would come forth on a white horse to Oops. save the nation and the world from. But then again, it, it fulfills... Uh, so it may well happen. Uh, uh, we, we don't know if it will, but if it, if it does, it will fulfill the White Horse prophecy. And then out of the darkness and depths of, of quote, losing the election, we could be facing a Romney presidency. I, I don't know. I, all I can say is that if this action is, is put forward to nullify the 55 votes of the Electoral College in California, which is going to be heard very shortly, we're going to have... Even if it doesn't stop Obama, it will take away any kind of legitimacy for his vote, and it will further spread the country even more than it already is. Well, so absolutely, you have to remember who's behind the end of the ultimate The least of these, 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 the least of these. Back in just a moment. Welcome back, and uh, so let's look, look at a couple different timelines here uh, of possibilities. Again, uh, you know, I don't have all the answers, but as I mentioned uh, on the break, I, yesterday I had one of my most powerful visions, and the vision was that we passed through the tail of some kind of, uh, not a commissary comet, but much bigger. It took a number of days for us to pass through it. The sky turned red, and I saw a meteor storm occurring across the sky. First, a few little, if you've ever seen an asteroid pass through the sky and you see the red tail, all of a sudden the entire sky turned yellow with the fire of it late in the afternoon or early evening. And uh, then there was a period of quietness for days, hours, or weeks, and all of a sudden there was a, a giant superquake, and all of a sudden... There was a coronal mass ejection that struck the earth, and anybody who was outside during it was fried. And there was enough advance warning. Many people went inside or went underground. Uh, the ozone layer was perturbed by this coronal mass ejection. didn't strike the earth directly, but glanced bad enough to dissolve the ozone layer and the protection from background cosmic radiation and x-rays. And uh, the satellite networks, the ground-based communications, and the power went out. And I'm not saying it's going to go for the whole world, but it's going to have a major effect 
uh, on the planet, and I, I, I've been looking at this uh, in various pieces of it for probably decades, actually. But yesterday was one of the most powerful. One of the things I noticed in this vision was that I could hear this sound, almost like people are now saying they can hear a tinnitus ring, but it was a ring that had a boom boom sound about, I'd say, four or five cycles per second, because we know the red dwarf stars, which are hundreds of times more powerful than the sun, are magnetic pulsars. And uh, they can induce massive coronal mass ejections, even though they're millions of miles away from the sun, because we have evidence that this object, this red dwarf, passes between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter, and was probably the object that resulted in the ancient destruction of the planet that's called Tiamat, that existed between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter. Uh, I think that we're, the globalists know this, which is why they're in a panic to build the ark in places like the Ozark Mountains, uh, in weather, Mount Weather uh, in West Virginia, in other areas, that the globalists are, are wanting to spin like a drunken sailor because they don't think there isn't any future. I mean, obviously, you have to think with Obama, either they want to blow out the economy and cause a bank holiday and devalue the currency, or they don't care because there isn't a payday. There isn't a day when they're going to have to worry about it. So they basically say, let's just eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow we die. I mean, I can't understand Obama's philosophy unless you think of one of the other pathways. What do you think, uh, Dr. Truat? Yeah, I just, uh, again, look like I, I just put it on my radio show, the preparations for Obama's retirement in Florida. Uh, I'm not sorry. Yeah, he bought a house right, and three weeks before the election. He bought a $10 million home, which how the hell can he do that with a half million dollar income uh, uh, in Florida and in, in Hawaii? I mean... It doesn't make sense to me. There's something about this that really smells, doesn't it? Well, it does. And the fact that uh, the realtors there in Hawaii are expecting him to occupy it on January 15th. Him and Michelle and, and uh, the whole family. That's five well, days before the inauguration him. day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why is, he hasn't canceled those plans, and then you have... Here you have Romney's camp going full steam as if they're going. They're still uh, working on their their uh, administration, their cabinet. They're not stopping. What do they know that we the people don't? Well, maybe this is part of the game, just like uh, the, the globalists want austerity fascism. They want the middle class destroyed. They want to devalue and cut down our military so we can't defend ourselves. And we, with a PDD-60 policy, will not respond to a first strike offensive with nuclear weapons against our U.S. population centers. We, if you had, an, for example, an immediate seizure with the, with the uh, reduction of military uh, support by $500 billion, you're going to have suppliers not paid. You're going to have people not, their checks are going to bounce, or they're not going to get checks at all. Uh, we're going to have a, a catastrophe with, you know, what, 170 bases roughly or more around the world, and people deployed now, the naval troops and Navy troops deployed off this coast of, of Syria ready for another war. This is so nuts, isn't it? Well, again, uh, the whole... American dollars, the Federal Reserve note, payable for heaven's sake. You can't restrict the flow of these and keep an economy going. That's the whole purpose of 1913. A hundred years ago, about they even put the Federal Reserve into, into existence. Uh, By the way, that deal was supposed to be a hundred years, and it ends, believe it or not, on Christmas Eve 2013. The Federal Reserve Act is now is will be null and void literally a little over one year from now. The Federal Reserve Act is gone. Isn't that interesting? That it actually wasn't in perpetuity. It had a hundred-year limit on it. Yeah, that's that's all part of this end game. I really do believe this is all orchestrated. Oh, absolutely. There's something going on here, and I think that Romney yeah. and Obama are both players. I really do. Absolutely. It's just actors. Actors yeah, on a grand stage. I mean, come on. Uh, the evidence is, you know, the, the keynote speaker at the Israeli Defense Forces annual summit in Israel has been, since uh, 2009, 2010, it's been Willard Mittens Romney. And how do you get invited to a, be the keynote address speaker, closed door session of the Israeli Defense Force in the How do you get to that point? Yeah, exactly. Now, the right. fact is, with Obama, we have someone who could, with his incompetence, push Israel to the point where without any kind of uh, 
protection or even good policy to stabilize the Middle East, we and NATO and the United States have actually pushed forward these Muslim Brotherhood to take over these countries, which is why they have 200,000 people protesting in Tahrir Square, seculars, women, other people realizing that the power grabbing by Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood is dangerous. And we are responsible for it. Now our senators vote to, to arm these terrorists to come in and kill Syrians and soldier in military and, and cause a regime change. This is completely illegal. It's another war that Obama's declared. Yeah, and uh, get the Peace Prize nomination? Yeah, it's actually the, it should be peace, P-I-E-C-E. Pieces prize. Pieces of nations, pieces of people, and, and, and basically pieces of a world broken by Obama and his global bankster masters. Well, it's, uh, the only way to really make sense of the whole thing is that it's orchestrated, it's planned, pre-planned. Uh, again, and the, uh, the answer to me is, really, you better have your spiritual uh, eyes set on, on the Lord. I mean, you just really have got to get this person else in order here. Exactly. I think that uh, what we're likely to see, I call it the nightmare after Christmas, and I had this humorous article I posted up that you looked at. I believe that Obama doesn't want to negotiate because his agenda is something big is going to happen. Maybe he's going to be turfed out of power, but really the austerity fascism, the globalist bankers want on American citizens. They want sequestration to destroy the military. They want someone who is going to... Um, carry all of these things out or a combination of Obama and and the Republicans but whether Romney gets back in or Obama continues they want to have a dance where as I say the game of chicken is we're, we're the chickens and it's, they're deciding and whether or not we're going to be uh, broiled, sautéed or roasted but either way the game of chicken is us No, it's, uh, I think it's absolutely right. I just thought it was very, very strange that the Obama, you know, uh, camp is, is, is having such a, I mean, it's, it, like you said, it's right, it's very strange that they're not even answering emails and tweets and texts. There's no, there's no discussion. I mean, even if you wanted to come out looking good, he could look like a hero that he actually acted bipartisan, which he's never done. All of his so-called accomplishments have been when he had a full mandate of the Senate and Congress, so he could just rubber stamp anything he wanted, whether it's Obamacare or these other things, or executive orders, which he's now done such an enormous number. He's done more executive orders than all the other presidents in history. Right. And again, you have to understand, uh, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. You have to understand that the, the POTUS, the President of the United States, is just a puppet. I mean, yeah, I call him a, a Obama Nokio. He is, someday he'll be a real live boy, as they say, you know, with, with George Soros, Geppetto, and the Rothschilds, and the globalist bankers sitting in their lairs in uh, the, the, the city of London. It really is the capital of Earth. It's just not New York City. It's the four square city of London where the gold price is set by Lord Evelyn Rothschild. I call him Evil Rothschild. And by the globalists and their puppet, Obama and America are being used as a golem to further the satanic global elite and what they're planning on doing. And uh, this about to happen war in Syria will put the entire population in grave danger of biological weapons release, economic chaos, a crash in the price and the availability of oil and the price going through the ceiling at a time when the population and the economy cannot withstand it. And again, remember that angel with his foot on the land and the sea. His foot stands at the base of the Russian base in Tartus, Syria. We're there. Amazing.